Hello, this is Jill, and hey, I'm still working on my Flight 2000 project here. Now, uh, I think the last video I did, I was just finishing up clear coat in the play field, and so I did that, and uh, I didn't show you this in video, but I put all the components back on, and most of the things are working okay. There's some light issues that I still have to resolve. Maybe I'll show that in another video, but today, I kind of want to focus on this back box here and if you actually look at these score displays here you might notice something interesting. Now it looks like four of the five displays are working pretty well. They're uh, pretty sharp and stuff but then you get this lower left hand one and it is flickering. Well I kind of want to solve that and I'm pretty sure I know what the issue is. So I did take the back glass off and the one that's giving me trouble again we're focusing in here it's just kind of flickering around and I also noticed that although you can kind of make out some numbers a lot of times the numbers that it actually displays are incorrect where it should be let's say displaying a 2 it displays a 1 or vice versa etc and um, so now display issues can be a little difficult to diagnose uh, it could be a variety of things. It could be the it could be the main um, uh, control board. It could be the actual display itself. There could be some here. Let me open this up and show you the back. So here's the, what the back looks like. I did take turn the power off before I did that, but you can kind of see the back of the display here. This this uh, display right here, and there's uh, this little board back here as well. There's a connector cable right here and you see a number of resistors, some transistors and uh, even some uh, little chips there. And really any one of these things could be the culprit but there are some things you can kind of look for. One, just to make sure that it is this display itself so the problem is here, I did switch some of these cables out so I kind of um, took, you know, unhooked this one and moved this display down here just to see if these inputs are accurate and since this one works fine um, and I plug this in this actually worked fine at the time so I know it's not the input through the cable so it has to be this part of the actual display either the display or the board now it's off here but you can kind of see all the little numbers here um, so the display another thing you should look at is are you missing an entire number are you missing maybe a couple of numbers or are you missing segments? Now this is a, a seven segment display. If you actually count these lines per, per uh, number or per display unit, it's, there's basically seven segments. And so if you're losing one of those segments or maybe a several segments, but everything else works, that's another thing you should look for. Now here we are in the back again. And now, so if you're losing some, so if you know that the issues in this board, and we do because we sw switch displays uh, and you're missing let's say entire numbers or just some segments. Now those problems are most likely either uh, some of these uh, resistors, there's some uh, 100 ohm resistors here that usually cause some problems or these transistors as well and so um, now that's not our problem. You saw it flickering um, so it's not just one number or one segment that's causing us issues. It's kind of the whole thing. It's just kind of all garbled up. And that is this little chip here. So here's a little zoom in. Now this this uh, chip is, called, is labeled MC14543B it looks like. Now this chip is basically a 16 pin. Uh, what, what It's called a BCD to 7 segment decoder chip. And uh, uh, now I had to look up what BCD means, and it's binary coded decimal. And essentially, this is what decodes the signal from uh, essentially the motherboard to uh, the little uh, eight segment, or excuse me, a seven segment display numbers. And I'm pretty sure, after kind of uh, looking around and uh, re researching some things, that this is the culprit here. Now, something probably burnt out on it or something, but I'm going to remove this. Um, put a little socket in there and replace it with a new chip. Okay, getting these weren't that difficult. I just uh, ordered them off of Marco Specialties. Um, they were just probably about a buck and a half each. They were pretty darn cheap. But I think the hardest part uh, of it's just going to be kind of removing it and resoldering uh, in the new chip. 
So removing these things uh, are pretty easy. Uh, you just have to remove this connector here and I have the power off. Um, everything's unplugged. So I'm just going to kind of use a screwdriver since it's a little easier. You can actually just kind of pull these up, but it because they're a little stiff, I like the control of using a screwdriver a little bit. So you just kind of lift it up gently until it's completely up. Like that. And then this whole display just kind of slips, slips out of the front. And there you have it. That's the display. Okay, so before I remove this chip, I'm just going to cut this out with a little snips like this. But before I do, I want to make note where this little notch is. Now all of these IC chips have uh, these little notches. They're either uh, little holes, little kind of drilled out holes, or these kind of U-shaped notches. And that's a directionality. That uh, tells you which way the pins uh, or the chip's supposed to land. Now this one uh, shows both a little hole and a little U-shaped notch on the left here. And I actually have, uh, I got these sockets, and these sockets actually come with a little dot on them. And uh, now it doesn't really matter. I can install this like this, but uh, this dot actually will help me if I install it this way, I'll help you remember where this, um, if I ever move the chip in the future, I always know kind of which direction it goes to. So I'll go ahead and snip these out. can't really get on the other side so I'm just going to kind of rub this back and forth until it breaks. Now I'm just going to try to get these little stubs out of here. I always like to use some solder wick to kind of clean up uh, the excess solder. Uh, you could also just use a suction device as well. Okay, so before I actually put the socket in, I always like to put some flux on the little pins here just to kind of help the soldering job out. Now I don't profess to be the best solder in the world and I'm not that good actually but it took me a lot of practice to get as bad as I am so if you don't feel comfortable uh, soldering um, components to your own boards please get a friend to help you or maybe practice on a broken board or uh, practice on another board um, to kind of get used to uh, how to solder. But uh, let's go ahead and solder this back piece in. Now it looks like these sockets in, but I always like to check the continuity, so get, go ahead and get your uh, multimeter out and set it to continuity. And make sure that uh, the pins, let's say adjacent to the one, uh, that the, they're not really uh, in continuity with each other because, you know, you can get uh, solder splattering into the other pin and you don't want them to have continuity. Because if you do cross a pin like that, you could actually uh, damage your board and your chip. And then uh, before I'm done, I always try to uh, follow the trace to another location and make sure it, it 
it has continuity all the way through. Okay, now it's time to actually put the chip in. Now again, you want to uh, make sure that the little dot match is in the direction, and it was to my left here, and I put in the uh, socket in the right direction. And just make sure that these pins, both on both sides, um, the chips usually come out a little flared. Let's see if I could show you. Uh, you can kind of see they're a little flared, and so you actually have to kind of press them in. Uh, they don't, if you just go straight in, uh, the other side will uh, kind of go on the other side of the socket. So you kind of like first pre press one end in, make sure that they all go in, and then you sort of pressing on the other side to push the, the pins in. And then you are just checking to make sure that they're all in the holes. And then you press it firmly in, and then you double check, make sure all the pins are in. And we're good to go. Okay, and just to put it back in, you do exactly the reverse. You stick, just kind of slide the board in. Actually, I'm going to plug it in before I get in there because I could kind of press on the back. Now, uh, these little uh, connectors uh, do should have a little pin here, and there should be one little pin missing, so you should be able to always put it, the connector in in the right direction. So we'll go ahead and press that. This way I can put my fingers back there and kind of help it press down before we put it in. And slide it in, shut it up, and turn it on and see if it works. And there you have it, five beautiful displays. Well, if, if I get a certain angle, but that's just the video, but uh, they do look perfect. So that one works good, have five of them all working well, and I hope this video helped out, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.